Okay, we got us a real familiar side here, a sink. Oh, Gus is trying to get into the to the mess down here. Gus, come here. Say hi. You're going to behave yourself. You're going to be in this video. You're going to have to behave yourself. All right? Okay, go on. Hey, anyway, let's... Anyway, we need to get this sink unclogged, and, you know, it went on for four days, and, man, the dishes was stacked up all over the place. I've kind of got all that mess cleaned up, and, uh, unfortunately, I can't show you exactly what happened, but it's it was so phenomenal how this thing come unclogged with just two little secrets that nobody seemed to know, and uh, I tried the, uh, the snake here, little old gal down at the... Home Depot fixed me up with that, and that was a waste of time. I snaked it all through 25 feet, and 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 it ran, and it cleared, but then it clogged right back up. And I was plunging it, and the problem with the plunger in this, uh, we'll get this little scenario here, is this little thing here. Your stopper, uh, it's, it's just got, it doesn't have any way to lock. So when you get it down in that hole like that, okay, it's sealed. But as soon as you go to plunging on it, you're just pushing water over into this other sink. You're not pushing it down the pipe where it might clear the pipe. And that's a huge problem. You're not going to get anywhere till you get that solved. And uh, I was surprised. I went to the hardware store, Home Depot. They didn't have anything to solve that. So I, I, I come up over here. Uh, this is going to kind of get interesting here. Uh we got uh, the three little bit of the Goldilocks going on here. We got the three cups and the two bricks and a st stack of books. Now wait a minute, that's and we got some some water boiling over here. It's all important, all important. And, and just a minute, that there we can't use that. And see, because uh, uh, that's my book. I wrote that. Uh, anyway, what I want to show you is how to. There's two secrets to getting this done. The first secret is locking that up. And uh, this one, this cup here, like I said, we got Goldilocks going on. That's too big. No, it won't work. See, it's, it's not really locking it up. So that one's too big. And this one, you could put it down here. What you got to do is uh, get some pressure on that little knob. So we put them bricks on it. Well, that one's just too delicate, you know. And uh, this is the one I wound up using. I, I took this right here, set it on there like that, and uh, put these two bricks on there. This this block and this brick. You, if you don't have a block and a brick around, you already have two or three around because they're real good handy. Uh, this is what I use to set them bricks on. But I picked something up at the hardware store. Might be a pretty good idea. This was, I think, 87 cents. And and here's one of the things. You kind of got to use what works. Here's another one might work, but it's a little bit rounded, so it doesn't work as good. But you could set that right down on there like that. And I, I believe it might work. It's worth trying. I'm going to go back to the one I used yesterday. I put this little cup in there like that. And then I put this brick on it man that's heavy and it kind of wants to go sideways but that's okay as long as it holds that little thing down and i put another one on there just to to be safe and see what you want to do you got your water over here without that if if you if you go to a plunging on your stopped up sink you're just going to push water from there over to here and you're never going to get to the clock. Once you got that set up like that, and I know that's a little bit unorthodox, and we're going to talk about that in a minute, but it works, and it'll save you a $300 plumbing bill. Anyway, you, you get that set up, and you got your old plunger. Now here comes the tricky part. Well, there, there's a secret here, and it's brewing. I'm going to oh, how do we get this done? So we got this set up, and now we're going to apply a second little secret. This is a two-secret deal. And, uh, you know, that's, that's what kind of the way this is about my book. Uh, 
This is T Wall, meaning like Trump Wall, uh, by Dan Frank. Don Com, uh, Dan Frank. It's at twall.com, and I'm I'm Dan Frank, and uh, I'll flip this thing around here in a minute, and you'll get to get a little view of me. I think I got my picture on the back. In fact, I think I'm wearing that same shirt today. Yeah, yeah, that's me. Anyway, uh, this is about, of course, the Trump wall, but it, it's really about getting things done in Washington. Uh, it, it's not, it's a fictional book, so it's a story about uh, a family of billionaires and uh, the, the le head of the family, the protagonist in the story, his name is Hank, H-A-N-K, uh, He's engaged to the president of the United States, and that that puts him in a unique situation where he can get things done that might not otherwise get done. Uh, and it, you know, it's 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 a little bit of a a two step process. I mean, president can only do so much, but the uh, president's fiance can do a whole nother stream of things, you know. And uh, we'll we'll come back to that in a little bit. But I wanted to show you right here. See here, even though we don't have our clog anymore, I did this one here. I blacked out this window because it was just conflicting with our, uh, the light was conflicting. But you can see, this is a little bit of grease that uh, me and Gus had us a hamburger last night, and this is what was left over. And you can see that's water underneath. I, I always put a little water in the bottom of these things so I don't melt the bottom out and Hot grease will uh, melt mixed with that water, and it separates, but it cools the grease down. So they, but you can see how that could clog your pipe. See, I got that totally sideways, and that that grease is just holding like a rock. You know, you know it uh, doesn't matter what I do. And see, that's what you got to get rid of. And you you can run a snake down through there and poke a hole in it. And it still ain't discharged. You know, I, I can even shake it. It's not happening. But there's a secret to put, getting that to, to disappear. And and I'll show you what it is. And I'll, I'll explain it to you. We've got our little thing of boiling water. Now, I've let it cool off a little bit. But we'll just pour it in. You can see just immediately how it works. Melt it. You can see it gurgling down through there. See? See how it's gurgling? Okay, that that that's going to sink here. The the water and the grease will separate, remain separate because they're they're uh, different weights and different heats. But this is the whole secret to getting rid of your clog. You got to get heat down there. So once once you've got this locked up, so that you can plunge on it, and uh, the water is going to actually go down the drain. Then here's the secret: so if you if you got a sink full of cold water, you got to get rid of it because that cold water is not going to get you that action going on in that grease. See that that that, that action is going to just dislodge that uh, that grease. You can see it's just melting it away, and, and it's the heat that's doing it. Uh, so what you got to do if if you got this full of cold water, and hopefully this ain't happening to you on Thanksgiving, but maybe if it is. Maybe, maybe it's a good thing. Save, first off, save you about $300 calling a plumber. But secondly, get you through your Thanksgiving holiday. You can see I just, just, just sucking that grease up and pretty soon it, it'll just dissolve. And so what you got to do if, if you got cold water in there, in which it's going to be cold, is that cold water ain't going to touch that grease. What you got to do is you got to get that cold water out. And uh, I actually, Undid the uh, undid the coupling below, and just use this old drawer off a cheap old drawer set, and use that to fill that up, get rid of all that water. And and you got that done. I can still see I got a towel over here from where I spilled a bunch of water. You get that done, okay? Yeah, you know, your sink is still clogged, but it's not got any cold water. Then you you put hot water. Uh, one way to do it would be to take like a, a bucket or whatever and run this until it's just it's scalding hot. And, and, and then let it fill up, say maybe about that full. And, and then maybe even 
take another little pan of boiling water and add to it. And then, so you got a sink full of hot water. Wouldn't even help hurt to put a little Dawn in there. That Dawn breaks down grease. Take your plunger then, with the, with these two bricks on here, holding holding that little knob down with that cup. That'll let you plunge this down. And now, instead of the water flowing back up over here, it's going to go down. So, you know, you might have to pump this thing 30, 40 times. Because each time, you're going to only push maybe a cup of water down towards that clog. And, uh, but pretty soon, I think I reached, I, I wrestled with this thing for three, four days and got nowhere and snaked it and everything else. Poured every kind of chemical known to man in it. Spent probably 30 bucks. See, that's just almost done. You can see it's regathering up at the top, but it's not solid. See, this is what's got to happen and it'll break that clog, but it, you got to get heat down to it. But anyway, I poured a bunch of chemicals in there that add heat. Oh, you see, it's just almost there. And see, as long, and every time you're pumping, you just, every time you're pumping, you, you, you're just pumping more of that hot water down to that clock. And it's, look at, it's just gone. It's just going right there, see. And, and right then, it's it, it, nothing. It just melted that water. And now, see, it's flood. It is flow now. We got it hot. And I just took boiling water and poured on it. That was just grease from a few hamburgers from me and Gus. And, and now it'll flow down through there. And, and it, your sink will clean. will clean out right now. I mean, it, it has just been gone. And I, I was just on the verge, ready to call a plumber and shell out maybe $300. And I thought, well, let's just try one more. So get, go to the locks, get to just exactly the right one. Fill your sink up with just hot, hot, hot water. And then start plunging. You might have to go 30, 40 times. But pretty soon, it'll clear out just like that. And it'll flow then. And you'll save yourself $300. And hey, my name is Dan Frank. I hope that helped you a lot. Uh, you can pay me back a bunch by picking up my book. Uh, it's uh, four nine, It's on Amazon. It's $4.99 for the e-version. It's uh, $22, I think. For the uh, text version, it helps me. It's better if you do both. Uh, I, I know that's twenty-two dollars to spend, but uh, that way you got one to keep, and one to loan out. Because you read this, you will see it's going to help people give them a new slant on things, and it's just like that, that little heat, man. That that just made all the difference in the world. You can look at it even now, man. That's just as flood as can be. You know that pipe is going to flow if you get the heat down to it. And if that, for some reason, don't work, you can. There's one other step you can get. If you can get under your house, you can take a hairdryer and uh, heat up your pipe with just a hairdryer. You don't want a torch or anything like that, but just an old hairdryer. And find out where the bins are in that pipe and heat it up and go through that process again. I know it's a bit of a pain, but if it saves you $350, you know, that's a pretty good deal. But anyway, this, this book, it, it, it's, uh, I got a, a page marked here. The protagonist in here, he's engaged to the President of the United States. Now, he's already a billionaire. And uh, I got this marked with a dollar bill. This is page uh, 89. I'm not going to read it to you. But if you get to page 89, it, you're going to discover that old Hank has a whole new way to drain the swamp in Washington, D.C. I know uh, President Trump has talked about that, and uh, man, he's done a beautiful job in some respects. Some things are still kind of lagging behind the walls, not coming along like it should, but you know, that's that's another issue. But uh, there's a way to get things done. And in my case, if a feller finds himself uh, engaged to the President of the United States, you ought to be able to unclog a sink. And that's kind of why I put this in this context. And the same way, if you remember when we were fixing this up here, we had to we had a sink full of water and we had to get rid of that and then fill it up again. And that seems counterintuitive, but that's exactly what we had to fill it up with hot water and then push that hot water to the clog to wind up with a fluid situation. Uh, 
And it's the same way in Washington. You're going to drain the slump, swamp. We're back to a plumbing issue. The thing you have to do is on page 89 in this book is to add more sharks to the tank. Add bigger sharks. Add hungrier sharks. And there's a way to do that for one dollar. Don't send it to me. I don't want your money. No, it, it explains in here exa exactly how to do it for one dollar. Uh, anyway, the book it costs you five dollars uh, on Kindle. It's on Amazon. Twall.com. Twall. There's uh, there is a construction company that has a Twall system. It might send you there. But if you go twall.com, I actually own that URL. It's just that construction company is, is uh, a bigger business than I am. And uh, you go there, and uh, this book is pretty phenomenal. I will tell you, I, I'm a Christian, of course, and uh, believe in Jesus Christ. And I, I write in a Christian way. This book does not have much in the way of Bible in it. It, it tries to... Uh, work on uh, putting the things of the Bible to work and uh, not just talking about them. And uh, in his book, Hank, he, he, uh, he gets challenged to put, to put faith into practice, to do some forgiving. And, and that's always the hard part. And this is, a, this is the second book in a series. This was my first book, my first novel. It was called uh, One Week. And it was published, uh, I finished it in 2013, published in 2014. This was published, uh, I think, in May, late May 2018. Uh, but anyway, Mr. Green is right up. He's a New York detective, hardball detective. And uh, he comes into this thing. There's a death in the beginning of this book. Hank's father dies. And then there's a second death in the beginning of this book. Uh, his mother dies. And Mr. Green is the detective investigating the death. And uh, he, he's a hardball New York detective. And he wants to cut himself in for a piece of the family fortune. And it uh, gets pretty interesting. In book two, Hank is still dealing with Mr. Green. But he's happened to deal with him under the, uh, under the way a Christian would. And uh, you, you don't have to read number one. Uh, the first book, there's enough in the second book uh, in that first chapter to bring you up to speed on who, all who the characters are. Uh, they're pretty good. They're both on Amazon, by the way, and, and they're both listed on my website, twall.com. Um, my, my editor called me about halfway through this book. It's 450 pages. I I'm working on the third book now, and I'm at uh, about 90 pages in, and I was hoping to get it down to 250 pages like I was this one, but it just wouldn't squeeze. This wound up at 453 pages, and I think that one's 406 pages. They're long books to read, but there's just a lot in there. Um, but um, my, I was, my editor was about halfway through this book on about page 200, and she called me, and she said, Dan, she said, Mr. Green is doing things that, you, you know, your protagonist is is reacting to him in ways that just don't make sense. And, uh, and, and I said, well, they don't make sense from a worldly perspective, but they make great sense from a Christian perspective. And she kind of backed up and she says, well, yeah, I kind of have not been to church in a while. And, and I said, do you read your Bible? And she said, oh, no. And I said, well, that, that's why it doesn't make any sense to you what he's doing. And in the end, she uh, she commented to me. She says, she, she had told me, she said, uh, that isn't really logical what he's doing. I said, yeah, but the Bible isn't founded on logic. It's founded on faith. And, uh, and the whole goal of this book was for Hank, not he was already a Christian, but to put his faith to practice. And that's a whole nother scenario when you start forgiving people and uh carrying on in that way and uh she wrote me back at the end she says she says you know on page 200 i thought your character was illogical but she says i cannot at the end of the book she says i cannot believe it's it's unimaginable what you did with that character and how mr green turned out to be 
so important to the plot. Uh, there's a, a phenomenal witness came from that character after, after he responded to, uh, uh, to Hank, the protagonist. Uh, and, I, and another thing, I had sent this off to her at about 370 pages. I thought it was done. And all of a sudden, uh, I was going to end it there. It was an all happy scenario, a good place to end the book. And uh, just a whole new scenario just kind of fell into my spirit. And we pushed it on for another 70 pages. And in some ways, they're the best 70 pages of the book. But you have to go to the end to get to them. I'm already working on number three. Like I said, it's about uh, 100 pages already. I I'd like to bring it in at 250 pages, but don't quote me on that. <laughs> <laughs> These things have a life of their own, as I've already discovered. I mean, uh, you, I, the way I write, I never know the way something is going until it gets there. I, I don't write where I sit down. And I, I may have a rough outline, but the actual ending of it and, and some of the twists and everything are all uh, kind of news to me. It's at twall.com. It's, it's a little bit about Trump's wall. But it's, it's more about this family and as they try to deal with issues. And kind of one thing in here that's kind of peculiar, there's a character in here by the name of AJ. He probably comes on, uh, oh, I don't know. It's, it's uh, not exactly sure where AJ comes. Oh, here he is on page 52. Uh, and I think he's in there just a little bit for that. So it's probably chapter 3. Uh, that where AJ, AJ comes in. Yeah, I'm pretty sure of it. Uh, and there, there's a ticking time bomb in here that uh, you'll like. Uh, it just kind of, the plot just kind of, uh, every chapter or so, there's a, an announcement, a text that Hank gets that tells him that a situation is, is getting more dire and he needs to act. Uh, but anyway, this character, AJ, I mean, Hank is engaged to the president of the United States. He's a billionaire. And yet in chapter three, he picks up this uh, stranger on the side of the road who's a hitchhiker. His name is AJ. And he certainly wasn't in my um, outline of the plot. I really didn't know what service uh, he, he uh, fulfilled, but he turned out to be very critical to the plot and a, a great blessing to the story. And that's just one of the things. I mean, I, I literally picked him up the way Hank picked up picked him up as a hitchhiker. I mean, I was just going along with the plot that I had outlined, and then all of a sudden, here's this guy AJ, and I said, "Oh, well, we'll pick this up." He wasn't planned or anything. And anyway, anyway, he's he was just a great blessed fact. The thing could not that last seventy pages couldn't have been in there without AJ. He he made it all end in a very special way. And the thing that's special about AJ isn't the fact that he's homeless, that he's a hitchhiker, and he has no money, no friends, no home, none of that. There's something else that's really special about AJ that makes all the rest of it work. And it's, all those things would just be unthinkable with a first family, you know, but yet it, they make it work. Uh, T-Wall by Dan Frank. And, uh, my word, I hope, oh, I just want to tell you, we're going to do another video in a minute and, and, uh, we're going to talk a little more about one week cause there's a little bit more of the story to tell. Uh, but th this other video is going to be when your, when your heater goes out and it's a way to get it going again with a rubber spoon or, uh, a, a spatula, anything like that, uh, Nine times out of ten, uh, you can get it going again with just one of these, and and then come Monday a twelve dollar part. Uh, so if you don't don't freeze sometime. Watch that other video because your heater never goes out when you think it's going to. Mine went out this week. All right, got it fixed. Get get the right cup and put hot water. You see here we've been talking all this time, and you notice that water that grease. Can't see it there. That grease is still just fluid in there. And as soon as you pump that hot water down to that grease, and it, even if your clog is hair or something, it, it'll it'll be grease that binds up with it uh, that makes it clog. In fact, you can see that's 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 no problem at all. That's not going to clog nothing. And and we didn't touch it 
except with hot water. And uh, but the critical is getting that locked up right there, so that as you're pumping on here, it's it's going down. This is Dan Frank. We'll see you on the heater video, getting your heater going in the middle of the night with a plastic spoon. And uh, pick up a copy of T-Wall. And like this video if you would. Give us a thumbs up, subscribe, and uh, maybe share it on Facebook. That would help me a lot. Hopefully we saved you about $300. And maybe your holiday if this has happened to you on Christmas or Thanksgiving, God forbid. God bless you. Take care. Gus says bye. I'll turn that up there. Right there. T wall. And you don't want to miss that's on page 89. T wall describes how to drain the swamp by adding bigger sharks to the pond. There's a bunch of sharks.